gaze upon him. His nobility and natural beauty has been the inspiration of canine lovers for the better part of a century. His herding heritage reflects his ability to maintain and protect the flock. His royal blood is a taproot of dominance and prepotency. Stamina, soundness, intelligence, and loyal temperament are the shining gifts of his breeding. Through generation upon generation, his courage, determination, and working ability has ennobled his masters, and in doing so, he becomes a legend. Whether herder or police officer, blind or aged, women or child, those he served have known his glory and sung his praise. Gaze upon him, of a legendary motion. The stormy whirl of his tail sweeps the wind in a celebration of spirit as he flies without wings. He is the German Shepherd dog, noblest among canines. As you observe present-day German shepherds moving effortlessly with a uniquely suspended gait, it is difficult to imagine the slender-bodied carnivora from whom they evolved. Approximately 70,000 years ago, in the caves of Neanderthals, canines lived with early man. They had heavy curled tails and erect ears. They helped to hunt food and haul wood when the earth was covered with ice. Of all the early carnivora, only the dog became domesticated. Wolves, jackals, and foxes remain predators of the wild forever. The Moscow canine boat discovery in 1901 dispelled the myth the German shepherd had descended from the wolf. The dog, in fact, developed parallel to his predator cousins. Man's best friend was first used to protect and herd sheep and cattle. Thus began a program of selective utility breeding that would last for centuries. In 1883, in Germany, farmers began the quest for a herding dog, combining great intelligence and stamina. This dream of combining and refining various herding types became a reality under the guidance of Captain Max von Stefanitz. With incredible vision and Teutonic determination, he presided over the birth of a breed, the Dersche Schäferhund. He stressed stamina, intelligence, trainability, and handiness of motion. Beauty of confirmation came years later. In 1899, von Stefanitz, with his friend Otto Meyer, founded the Verein für Deutsche Schäferhund, which to this day controls all aspects of the breed in Germany, as well as many countries of the world. About 1900, Horen von Grafrath, the first dog registered in the SV, sired Hector von Schwaben, who was the grandsire of Roland von Stockenburg. These three are generally considered to have contributed most significantly to the breed's early genetic pool. The first German Shepherds were exhibited in the United States in 1906. 
The German Shepherd Dog Club of America was formed in 1913. As the need for herding dogs declined, the German Shepherd emerged as a dog for all seasons. His contributions to modern man are legend. We see them guiding the blind, assisting the police and military, locating narcotics, bombs, and weapons, digging through snow and rock avalanches, searching for earthquake survivors, protecting the aged, and being a child's best friend. Throughout the years following World War I, through the early 50s, the German Shepherd was by far number one in breed registrations. The Shepherd survived this overpopulation and in 1988 had stabilized as the fifth most popular dog in the United States. When Captain von Stephanus stressed intelligence and utility, he laid the foundation for a superlative breed who serves man by fulfilling his need for an infinitely brave, intelligent, and loyal friend whose limits as a servant to man may never be reached. Hello, I'm Jane Bennett. I've had a love affair with a German Shepherd dog for over 50 years. Presently, I'm on the board of the German Shepherd Dog Club of America and its delegate to the American Kennel Club. My deep respect for this noble breed inspired me to write the book, This is the German Shepherd Dog. One of my proudest achievements has been my 30 years as I served as editor of the German Shepherd Dog Review magazine. My husband Tom and I have bred and raised German Shepherd dogs for over 40 years, and we don't think our lives would have been complete without them. This may sound a bit like bragging, but those who know me know it isn't. I'm just telling it the way it was. One of the brightest stars in the Shepherd firmament is the Kobe Tucker Hill Kennels. Started 20 years ago, and its founders, Kathy Pottle and Gloria Birch, have devoted their entire lives to this breed. Their achievements are legend. Together, Kathy and Gloria have bred 120 champions, many of them obedience titled, and always owner handled. On top of a hill in Northern California, Cappy and Gloria continue to breed, train, raise, and exhibit some of the finest German Shepherd dogs in the world. Among the great Cubby Tucker Hill champions have been their two foundation bitches, world select record holder and register of merit dam, Angelique, and the outstanding producer, Contessa. Both were bred to litter brothers, Grand Victor Harrigan, and the best in show winner, Gilligan's Island. These matings produced the highest register of merit dam in the history of the breed, Grand Victrix Rosemary, and her famous sisters and brothers from the spice litter. Felita comes from the strongest producing tail female bloodline in the United States, with six generations of uninterrupted register of merit producing bitches through her daughters Rosita and Carmelita. These combinations of bloodlines have produced best in show champions, Monty Albin, Little Deer, Hot Legs, Chippewan, Ferrari, and two Quaker Oats Award winners, Finnegan, and the top winning German Shepherd Dog of all time. Cappy and Gloria have won 36 select titles on German Shepherd Dogs at our yearly national specialties and have bred 28 Register of Merit producing sires and dams. Among these, their favorites are Zinfandel, Durango, Maserati, Don Quixote, Romanico, and Jordash. Cappy and Gloria have both served on the board of directors of the German Shepherd Dog Club of America and wrote the important Red Book for 11 years. Cappy also created the National Obedience Victor and Victrix Award and was the first woman recipient of the Lamar Coons Award. All of these achievements were capped by one symbolic dog, Kobe Tucker Hills Manhattan, known as Hatter. 
In 1987, he became the first German Shepherd Dog to go best in show at the Westminster Kennel Club at Madison Square Garden. Hello, I'm Cappy Pottle, and this is Gloria Birch. We've been breeding German Shepherds together since 1970. We would like to share with you in this film much of what we have learned about this unique and special breed, thus creating the informed owner who can develop a German Shepherd puppy to their fullest potential. The character and temperament of the German Shepherd reflects their pedigree. It is a combination of courage, intelligence, confidence, alertness, and an innate desire to work and please their owners. If the temperament of a puppy is sound, then a correct environment enhances that character. As with any physical trait, temperament, both good and bad, is passed at the moment of conception from generation to generation. I'd like to take you on a tour of our facilities so you may see how this environment enhances our puppy's character. This is the upper kennel of our facility and we keep all of the dogs that are boarding here. You'll see that we have different breeds of dogs that we do board and also all the bitches that we have that come in for breeding stay in the upper kennel. It's a very, very secure place. This is uh, the lower part of our kennel here. It's where we keep all of our show dogs and all the dogs that we have in for conditioning. We don't believe in having our show dogs on uh, any kind of hard cement surface. We believe that German Shepherds in the wild did not run on cement, so we don't like to have the dogs on cement. So we have gravel in the lower area. <laughs> All of our show dogs are champions and, and some older puppies, like we have older puppies in the middle pen. Meet up there. That's it. This is our puppy facility, and we don't really let anyone come down here that's been in the upper kennel areas or over where we have our adult dogs. Uh, we try to keep the puppy facility, the area, the whole area, very quiet and calm. Uh, a nice, safe environment for raising puppies so that they don't get scared from anything. And, and uh, when they use, when the puppies leave the facility, they go to their new homes. We don't take them up to the upper area at all. Uh, we all only use shavings for our puppies to walk on. And each litter that we have, we take the shavings out of the pens and we sterilize the pens thoroughly. And then we add new shavings. Uh, these pens are all cement. And then we put shavings on top of the cement. Yeah, you do for babies. Yes. The puppies get a lot of attention down here. We have uh, three employees and they get brushed regularly and we feed the puppies three times a day at this age. They love their mama. As soon as their mother leaves, I take over. Yes, they do. Yes, I do. Yes, they 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 do. This is Sabia, and uh, she has nine little babies in here. And we always feel it's, it's real important to raise the mother and their babies in a nice, quiet environment. So this is part of our kennel building down where the puppies are. And we also raise the puppies from the time they're born. Uh, they're whelped on papers. And then we uh, put a carpeting down because we feel like it's real important for them to be able to have good footing at a very early age. So they never get off of the carpeting. We keep changing the carpeting about every week. And uh, they stay on carpeting until they get to be about five weeks of age. So the mother and the babies usually stay in this environment together until they're about six weeks. And then everybody goes outside. We have indoor and outdoor rooms where they can go outside after they, you know, after the puppies are about five weeks old. Then they all learn to go outside and use the doggy door. The first impression of a good German Shepherd dog is of a strong, agile, well-muscled animal, alert and full of life. It is well balanced with harmonious development of the forequarter and hindquarter. The dog is longer than tall, deep bodied, and presents an outline of smooth curves rather than angles. It looks substantial and not spindly, 
giving the impression, both at rest and in motion, of muscular fitness. The ideal dog is stamped with the look of quality and nobility, difficult to define, but unmistakable when present. The structure of the German Shepherd is divided into three parts, the forequarter, the middle piece, and the rear quarter. The top line is also considered. The majority of the dog's weight rests on his front legs, pasterns, and feet. The foundation of the front assembly is the shoulder blade, which is long and well laid back. The neck is strong, muscular, and relatively long. The deep chest, commencing at the prosternum, is fully developed and carried well down between the legs. Note the pasterns are strong and springy. The middle piece, which outlines the major portion of the top line, consists of withers, higher than and sloping into a level, firm, and relatively short back. A strong loin without undue length between the last rib and thigh. A long and gradually sloping croup disappears smoothly into the tail. The tail is set on low rather than high and held at rest in a slight curve like a saber. The well angulated and strong rear quarter propels the dog forward. The whole assembly of the thigh and stifle, viewed from the side, is broad and curvy. Both upper and lower thigh are well muscled. The metatarsus, the bone between the hock joint and foot, is short, strong, and tightly articulated. Here's an interesting comparison between a beautiful puppy who grew into an elegant adult. Her movement was balanced and fluid at four months. She certainly matured into her promise. Puppies between five and six weeks of age are miniature adults. Watching the six puppies move will give you an idea of how we evaluate a litter. Although we can tell each puppy apart by the time they are weaned, we have identified them with colored yarn. The males are judged before the females in the show ring, so we will start with them. Red Boy is compact and moves with coordination and assurance. He keeps a firm back and high wither in motion, but ideally could be more extreme in angulation, even though well balanced at both ends. Yellow Boy is smaller in size, but more extreme. See how his hock reaches further under his body to propel him forward? And his front legs reach out to extend toward his nose. He also holds an excellent top line while trotting. White Boy is compact, has longer legs, and is cow hocked. He will be the tallest dog in the litter, but lacks rear drive and could carry a better top line in movement. Blue Boy has a wonderful face and expression, but is strictly a pet. He does not trot smoothly, and his croup is too steep. He has a poor tail set. The angulation is not adequate, but he will be loved just as much as his litter mates. Okay, these are our four males, and we put them in the order that we like them as far as movement is concerned. Uh, this is the big red male. He's beautifully balanced and coordinated puppy and has a lovely postornum. He's got very good bone and substance, uh, a very wonderful show attitude, uh, lovely flowing croup. Uh, it's a toss-up, in a way, between him and yellow, but yellow is a little bit smaller dog. 
We like the masculine male. He's a little bit more low stationed, uh, possibly a little more extreme in angulation. He has an excellent top line, so that uh, we're gonna watch him also. Uh, the third male, you can notice, has a, a long leg. Uh, we like shepherds to have length of leg, but we don't like them to be overly long, so that's something that we might uh, you know, question about him. He's a nice balanced dog also, but does not have the angulation that the other two. This fourth little guy is strictly a pet. He has a poor top line, a poor croup, no rear angulation, and uh, the tail set is really quite bad. He holds his tail up. But he has a wonderful personality and temperament. He'll make a good pet. And he'll make a good make pet. A good pet. Yes, I will. think of all four puppies, possibly yellow has the best front reach. And that's something that's very important in shepherds also. What Gloria and I look for when evaluating puppies is the overall balance and coordination. Uh, that is the dog that in the long run is going to make the best show dog. Orange Girl is beautiful and has all the lustrous trimmings of a show dog. Rich pigment, a plush coat, and moves with suspension and ease. She is well angulated fore and aft and has the most joyful personality. Her top line and back are excellent. Blue Girl is not as nice as her sister. It is easy to see the difference in quality between them, especially when they trot. This is the puppy we like the best. She's plusher coated. She's deeper bodied. She has a, a nicer top line. She has more of a sloping top line and a nice sloping croup into her tail. Her tail's nice and straight. She has a beautiful posternum. She's nice and clean in the shoulders. She has dark eyes. She has a good bite. And her ears are set well on her head. And overall, we like her the best. Kathy and I. This one's pasterns could be a little bit better. And she is not as good in the elbows. And also, she, her croup is not as well formed. Uh, she has a nice, nice little rear end. Uh, I'd like to see her with maybe a little bit better back on her, a little better top line. But she's also a nice quality puppy. She's a good girl, yes. And now you see her coming toward you. See how nice and clean she moves going away. Pick male is even better going away than his sister. But coming toward you, he toes in and elbows out. Whoops. This puppy toes in slightly, but has beautiful front reach. He carries himself with assurance. Note how wide he tracks when he first starts out, but as he gets going, he reaches into a center line of balance. The worst mistake a new owner can make is to buy a dog as a pet, thinking he can beat the odds and pay a lower price for pet quality and then turn it into a show dog. No breeder will sell a prospective show dog at pet prices. Be upfront with the breeder and explain whether you want a show dog, foundation bitch, or a puppy for a good companion. The better dog you expect, the more time and money you will spend. Hi. 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 Hi.
to see you again. Oh. Jory and this is Quick. We'd like to buy one of the puppies you showed us yesterday. We're having a hard time deciding which one, though, would be the best one for us. Could you help us figure out which would be the best one for showing? Oh, yes, we'd be happy to do that. That's no problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Debbie, this is a little oh. green collar, the one that you like the best. Oh, yeah, Katie Pie. This is the one I like, yeah. That is a cute puppy. I know ah! that you both were very much interested in getting a show puppy. Right. And, Definitely, uh, yeah. Yesterday, I know that we looked at them moving, and they were both comparable. But uh, Cappy and I, you know, have been thinking about it uh, over overnight, and we really feel that this is going to be the puppy that will finish his championship. Why do you think this would be the better show puppy? Well, she has darker, richer pigment. She has a quite a bit darker eye. Um, she's more angulated. She has a gorgeous posternum. And uh, she has beautiful feet, dark nails. Uh, her croup is a little better than the other puppies. OK, well, maybe you could show me that. Well, the croup is back here. As it goes into the tail set, it's, it's a lot, it's, it's, she's more smooth as it goes into the tail set. They both have nice tails. Oh. I think that uh, even though you like this puppy the best, Debbie, it's like uh -huh. she would be a, probably a little better brood bitch. Now, why, why would you think she would be a better brood bitch than, than a show puppy? I want to reiterate to you a little bit about this puppy, Debbie, and why I feel like the, <laughs> little, the finer points that, that are important for showing, they both have comparable temperaments, but she's a little more showy than this one. Mm -hmm. And this one has the white spots on her feet and her, and her uh, eye color, and everything about her is a little faded. And that's okay. why I feel like this puppy would be more easily become a champion. Mm -hmm. And that's what you both wanted. Right, it is. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I think that uh, we really ought to go with her advice and take this one. I think you'll be happy with that decision. Well, I know we would be happy with either one because I think they do have beautiful temperament and, and, and lovely do. personalities. And uh, so we do want puppy. a winner. Oh, you can grab this puppy. So we're going to take this one. So what do you think, Laura? This one. All right. <laughs> oh, she's such a cutie. Okay. I have uh, a bag of dog food that I'd like to give you. We give all the puppies that leave. And all your other important papers, our puppy brochure and, and your guarantee and your pedigree. Okay. And a little uh, starter kit. Okay. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. If you have any questions or problems at all, I want you to give me a call. Okay. Great. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. In 1988, the American Kennel Club recorded approximately 50,000 German Shepherd registrations. This is an extraordinary number for any breed. A prospective buyer has an obligation to purchase from a breeder who has a proven track record of producing correct temperament, type, and soundness. To produce quality German Shepherds, one should consider the following. Breeding the best to the best is always a good beginning, but the pedigree should be compatible. Furthermore, all good dogs are not champions, and all champions are not good dogs. Genetics is a very complex science. Much of it reflects the experience of the breeder, combined with their knowledge of their line. When all is said and done, breeding is simple, but not easy, and boils down to eliminating the negatives and accentuating the positive over many generations. This male has a beautiful outline a high wither and sloping top line. He has a balanced outreaching side gait. See how his shoulder opens as he extends his leg and reaches out towards his end of his nose. His rear hock drives in way under his body which propels him forward. Going away he is quite sound but his hocks are a little loose. Coming towards you, he elbows out a little in motion. 
The second male is low stationed, long in body, and dark in pigment. He is not coordinated because of his extreme rear angulation and loose ligaments. Although he has difficulty keeping his head up, you can see he's still a lovely moving puppy. He could have a firmer back. He is sloppy moving away. This is quite normal for a puppy of his age. Coming towards you, he is a little wide and elbows out a bit. This puppy is elegant. She has a soft baby coat that will become plush when it grows in. She has a beautiful arch of neck and a great show attitude. See her balanced, suspended movement, something that we really look for in German Shepherds. She is the closest to the standard and the soundest. Going away, her hawks are almost perfect. Coming towards you, she is very clean. The second female has a lovely top line standing. She has more sharp angles and less smooth curves and is extreme in angulation. See her extended side gait as she moves and she is still balanced in her movement. She is lighter in bone and substance but excels in side gait. She is very sound going away. And coming toward you. Notice her ears are not up yet, which is normal for a German Shepherd puppy at this age. Before you purchase your show puppy, consider these suggestions. Attend as many AKC shows as you can, especially German Shepherd specialties, both regional and national. Read everything you can about the breed, club magazines, the German Shepherd Dog Review, Dog World, and the AKC Gazette. Study the books, The German Shepherd Dog by Ernest H. Hart and The Complete German Shepherd Dog by Jane Bennett. Learn to recognize puppies with healthy coats and outgoing temperaments. Know the breed of our reputation and try to see some of their dogs in the show ring. If at all possible, visit the breeder. See how the dogs and young puppies are cared for. Check particularly for cleanliness. It all begins with a good bitch. Her pedigree, temperament, and produce record are very important in your evaluation. Before you pay for your puppy, inquire whether the breeder guarantees the dog against disqualifying faults that may develop. If they do, have everything in writing. 
Some breeders have written contracts approved by the German Shepherd Dog Club of America. Make certain your puppy has a correct scissor bite. And a final word, don't always select the biggest puppy. Look for temperament, type, bone, proportion, and movement before size. When you leash break your puppy, do not yell or jerk the lead. In order to make a good show dog, everything associated with training has to be pleasant. The moment the puppy does it right, stop and praise her. Leave every lesson on a happy, positive note. The briefer the training session, the better. A dog that baits intensely always shows better. Teach your puppy to learn to look at you for food. When she does so, and her ears are erect, praise her extravagantly. Try to get her to step into a show pose. If not, begin to stack her or set her up by hand. When you wish her to stop, raise her head gently and say, stay. Straighten the front leg so they are directly below the shoulder. Reach under her tummy and set the outside rear leg first. Then, set the inside rear leg. Check the bite by placing one hand over the muzzle, fingers on one side, thumb on the other, and lift up while the other hand is under the chin, pulling the lower lip down. Have friends check your dog's bite. Examine the body and the testicles on males. You can reach under the tail from the rear or his tummy. There are many tricks to correctly gating your dog. But at an early age, it is most important to get her to trot with her head up. You can do this by encouraging, teasing with liver, a squeaky toy, or anything which keeps her happy and alert. Recall requires a friendly, very patient, and happy tone of voice. Always use the puppy's name. The command come is accompanied by a gentle tug on the six foot lead. You reel the puppy in. When he arrives in your arms, pet and hug him so he knows love always awaits. Retrieving is a more difficult exercise. To get your puppy to retrieve a thrown object and then return it to you cannot be done in one lesson. Do not try to teach retrieving until the puppy has mastered recall. Today, this puppy is experiencing his first lesson, and as you can see, he's not interested in putting the rabbit in his mouth. He doesn't quite understand what's expected, but within two to three weeks, he will retrieve an object just as confidently as this six-month-old puppy with art. With young puppies, the practice sessions should never exceed 10 minutes, no more than twice a day and always try to end on a successful exercise followed immediately by immense praise. Bringing it to socialize it at the, uh, so she gets used to people and used to confusion and new situations. Oh, so cute. Yeah, she's just better, she's real friendly. She needs to meet new people. I thought you were giving her away and I was saying, oh, I'm gonna take her. <laughs> Socialize your puppy as much as possible. Take him with you whenever you can. Shopping, visiting friends, picking up the kids at school, everywhere. A puppy so exposed accepts the excitement of a show with confidence and anticipation.
What's the deal? Somebody's got to explain to me on that. We're socializing her for uh, getting used to all sorts of different things, noises, and any situations. And it's good for showing in the show ring. It's also good for doing training. Of all it's very important that you touch your puppies and your adult dogs every day. The puppies need to be touched all over, and it's very important that they get touched all over, even their little feet and their legs, because it always makes them more manageable as they become a little older, and they know that you care for them when you do that. And this little puppy is about three and a half months old, and we usually start, when they're this young, uh, with a nice wet towel, and we rub them all over their little bodies with a really wet towel. They don't usually get bathed until they're a little older, six to seven months, we would, we would give them a bath if they needed it. Uh, German Shepherds often don't need baths, but it's important to keep them clean. Uh, and lots of times people have to give puppies and adults baths if they have a very bad flea problem. But uh, this puppy doesn't have a bad flea problem. And, uh, but we always check. It's very important that you always check. It's important that you usually just start at their little faces and make sure that their eyes are clear. And you look inside of their little ears and make sure that they don't have dirty ears. If they have dirty ears, you use cotton and alcohol and just put a cotton ball in there and just rub around until you get them all cleaned out. It's uh, usually pretty important to have maybe two people clip the nails because I usually always like to have them scratched on their chest so that they don't pay any attention to when I'm clipping. <laughs> So you just clip off the very end. You can see where the quick starts. They're just like people's nails, actually. And the little, and the very end of the nail is what you cut off. Then you take a brush like this, called a pin brush, and that brush you brush all over them. Don't brush hard, but you brush their coat backwards all over, lifting any kind of dirt or any kind of piece of stick or leaf or anything that could be caught in them. You brush their tummies and their back legs. Yes. And they get, they get to where they really like to be brushed. Yes. And as you're brushing them, you get the chance to look under their little arms to make sure they don't have any little hot spots or any little sores. Sometimes when it's hot, they can get little rashes under their arms. Or you check their little tummies to make sure that they don't have any fleas. This is the, comb, the kind of comb that we use when we comb the puppies. It's a fairly fine tooth comb also but it separates the hair, and it also combs out any kind of thing that a puppy might have in their coat. Neosporin is a very, very good product to put on. Uh, sometimes in the summertime, especially dogs, German Shepherds will have, get little dry lips on the side of their lips, and you can just put a little Neosporin on the side of their lips, and that totally corrects that problem. It's a very good product to use on any kind of a rash. Or you can put it on their nose if their nose is a little dry. Yes. Or if they get a little sore between their toes, sometimes if they're in the water a lot, you can put it in their toes or under their between their pads. And we always look in their, under their pads too, especially if people have their puppies on cement a lot because they can get a very bad fungus or rash on their, inside of their pads. So it's imperative for your puppy's growth and for your adult's health that you take a stool sample in regularly and have it checked by your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can tell you exactly what kind of worm their puppy has by looking at it under a microscope. It's very important that you use the proper worming for the parasite that you have. And if you buy a wormer from a, a local grocery store or a feed store, you may not be worming your puppy with the right type of worm medicine for the worms that it has or the parasites that it has. And usually when a puppy goes to a new owner, it will want to bond with them because they will bond to the person that takes them from their home. And the puppy will follow them through the whole house. And that was, that was a very important part of their learning their environment is knowing where what is in the house. And it's very good sometimes to just start them off with a small portion of the house. And it's also very important in housebreaking that you let them go in and out of the door that you're going to want them to go in and out of to go to the bathroom several times, I would say seven or eight times during the first day that you take your puppy home. Puppies don't make mistakes, people do. And if you don't catch your puppy before they go to the bathroom, it's not their fault.
So it's very important at night that you have a crate to put them in if you're going to keep them in the house overnight. And puppies bond to their people a lot better if they do stay close to the people that they've come to meet. And we recommend a wire crate for them uh, so that you can see out of it. Don't ever buy a small puppy crate for a German Shepherd. They will outgrow it in three to four months. So you buy a large wire crate if you plan to keep the puppy in to housebreak them overnight. It's very important that children don't tease puppies or pull their ears or their tails or they pinch them or stick things in their eyes. And children don't really know what is acceptable or what's not acceptable. So it's very important that you guide your child through how to handle the puppy. Puppies, German Shepherd puppies, make absolute wonderful guardians for children, and they love children. But they also need children to care for them. Here are 15 suggestions to help you raise a happy, healthy show puppy. Worm your puppy regularly. Check stool samples every three weeks to four months. The first sign of worms is when the puppy stops eating. Brush and handle your puppy daily. Check for bruises, rashes, and fleas. The battle against fleas is constant. Keep your puppy's nails short by cutting them regularly or placing him on gravel. When the puppy is teething, it is a very stressful time. The ears tend to come down or go soft. This is usually nothing to worry about. But if they are not permanently erect by six months, correct taping will be required. When your puppy is eating, drinking, playing by himself or sleeping, do not disturb him. Respect his territory. Your puppy's quiet time is precious to his development. And to four months, many sleep as much as 16 hours a day. Let your puppy win every battle at least until 20 weeks and beyond if you have the patience. That's how you build his confidence and help him develop into a secure adult. Never strike him, but rather correct him with your voice. Perhaps a little tug on the side of his neck. If he is very naughty, tap him gently underneath the chin with the upside of your palm. Remember, every correction is immediately followed by praise. Always praise your puppy when it does something to please you. Use a happy, friendly tone. Make training a pleasant experience. Your enthusiasm is contagious. Only keep a collar on your puppy when he's being trained, and always use a thin nylon choker that does not mark the neck. Never recall your puppy when you are angry. Socialize him as much as possible. Take him with you whenever you can. Shopping, visiting friends, picking up the kids at school, everywhere. A puppy so exposed accepts the excitement of a show with confidence and anticipation. Play games daily, especially retrieving and baiting, but for no more than 10 minutes per session. Keep him on a regular schedule for feeding, playing, and sleeping. And this is very important in developing a proper show attitude. Never bait or feed your puppy by hand when he is sitting or jumping up on you. Only give him treats by hand when he is standing still on four legs directly in front of you with his attention on the bait food. Train him to watch as you move it around, behind your back or above your head or to the side. Reward him with the treat and praise when he brings his ears erect and stands alertly. Avoid stress and confrontation. Don't rush the train. Take it slow, make it fun. It is the responsibility of every dog owner not only to care for the physical well-being of his charge, but to develop his mental capabilities. The training of large dogs who have tremendous potential for learning is absolutely essential with German Shepherd dogs. An untrained puppy can grow into a problem adult. You must never allow your dog to become a bad citizen, unreliable, unpredictable, and even dangerous to his environment. Plan to attend one of the recognized obedience classes usually sponsored by local German Shepherd Dog Clubs. If there are no obedience classes in your vicinity, buy a good book, try to locate another owner, 
with a puppy and get started on your own. Schutzhund means protection dog. This is not to be confused with the term guard or attack dog. He is as friendly as any other family dog, but more obedient and better educated. And if the need arises, he will be a courageous and unselfish protector. Schutzhund is a three-phase contest, tracking, obedience, and protection. Shepherds have excellent scenting ability, but tracking evaluates the dog's persistence and drive. Obedience tests responsiveness to the handler. Protection evaluates courage, drive, and discrimination. Schutzhund requires good temperament and soundness of mind and body. A fear biter or one who is continually aggressive towards humans or other dogs cannot develop the steadiness and reliability required of a working dog. Loud noises or quick movements may startle a puppy, but it should recover at once and explore the reasons. Do not pick a shy puppy that can't hold his own with his litter mates. When playing with your puppy, always let him win, thus building his confidence. Try to avoid stress and confrontation. A happy, well-adjusted puppy grows into a secure working adult. Your puppy should be stimulated to carry and retrieve. Teething puppies do well on nyla bones that have been in the freezer. Puppies need to strengthen their biting muscles and chewing on large, hard objects is excellent. Another very important factor in your shepherd's ability to acquire a title is the quality of his pedigree. A check of his ancestors' working degrees will yield intelligent clues. Most significantly, basic character, as well as conformational soundness, is determined at the moment of conception. Courage, curiosity, intensity, and intelligence are also inherited characteristics. They can, along with physical condition, be enhanced by environment. Bitches as well as males are good for Schutzhund. Schutzhund requires dedication and patience, but it is very rewarding. Both you and your dog will enjoy it immensely. Preparing your puppy for the uh, show Toy ring puppy. requires three ingredients. Ring uh, first, an attitude of fun Toy and games. And Toy the selling. second is uh, patience. And the third is a very safe classroom environment. And we got, today we're going to show you a class of very novice people with fairly novice dogs. And we want to show you how we're going to train these puppies and how to train the handlers, which is also important. So could we have everybody's attention? And let's just start going around the ring once and keep your dog on the left side and have it trot. You want to start out ahead? And keep your leash all in your left hand if you can. And try to have a loose leash. Puppies, report to ring two. Same room in which you were ring in which you were judged. Ring two. The first thing you're going to do when you stop the dogs is go around to the front and try to place the dog's front leg straight. So let's all try to do that, keeping the leash in your left hand. That's good. Now hang on to the puppy when it's up here. That's it. Kneel down. You want to put its legs up here in front. That's right. So you want your legs, you want your legs straight. That's right. Pull this leg around in front like this, Lauren. You want this leg to go back. That's it. That's good. That's good. That's good for a start. Now praise the puppy a lot. Can you stack your doggy? When the judges, it's always important to stack the front first. So whenever you, whenever you, you always need to sort of stand up with your dog at the beginning and make sure from the front that you're walking the puppy into standing straight in the front. See how its legs are straight now? Then you go down and you stack the rear end. There you go. That's good. Very good. And then you want to fix the tail. All right. That's good. Now you want to come around and show me the puppy's teeth. Is if you take a hold of the collar like this, she can't go backwards. So you take a hold of the collar with one hand, and you take your hand on top like this and close the mouth. Can you do that? Very good. Now open the mouth in the front. Close her mouth. Very good. Very good. Now can you show me the sides of the teeth? On the lips. That's very good. Thank you. 
graze your dog. Now tell her she's a very good girl. Marie, what I want to do is show you how to hold your leash. And what you want to do with your puppy is you want to see how I hold my hand over and I'm going to gather the leash sort of in a, in a uh, gather it all together so that I can hold it like this in my hand and it doesn't uh, fall down and I don't trip on it. You want to try that yourself? Okay. Now you want to take your puppy around? Just take her right around in a small circle right here, honey. Right here. And talk to her when you're going. You know, make a little noise. Do you have a little food? You want a little food? Okay, show her the food so you can get her to come. That's it. That's right. Try to get her head up a little bit. Whoop. I'm going to go around now that your dog is stacked and we're going to check, go over his body like the judge goes over the body to make sure that the dog is sound and they feel him all over. You need to restack him again. Okay, let's just reset his rear end here. Can, uh, many judges will check the dog's testicles by reaching under their legs, between their legs like this, or they'll reach behind and check. And the dog has to be very calm while you do this. And it's a very personal thing to do to dogs, so it's very important that the dog is used to having his testicles. He was very good. Well, he's a good boy. What we are going to do now is we're going to have Rachel take Gidget around the ring once as the best way that she can. Uh, Rachel hasn't handled a lot of dogs in the ring, so she's. this is one of the first times she's taken a really mature dog in. Okay, are you ready? All right, take her around like you would in the shoulder. Remember how you hold your wrist. That's good. Okay, right around a circle. <laughs> you did beautifully. Connor, what I want you to do, uh, you have your leash held right. I want you to take her around the ring as best that you can. Try to show her off, okay? There you go. What I'm going to do is stack Gidget up in a show pose, and I throw her front legs off balance a little bit. Put her foot down, bring her back leg up, and try to make her look as nice as I can. When you get her stacked up like this, then you can let your leash down and back and really try to show your dog off. Now we'll take her around the ring once. So what I do is put her off choke, because I don't want her to, to uh, choke herself as she's going around the ring. And then try to get her attention. Give it. You ready? Good girl. I gather my leash. Come on, Gidget. Off we go. We start out slowly. We let her out. And try to keep her under control. Now we take her a little faster. Let's go, Gidget. This is what we call pulling on the leash. Right. <laughs> 
She knows how to mark. She knows how to This is Fun Match Day, and more than 150 breeds enjoy an outing in the California sunshine. This match, though unsanctioned by the American Kennel Club, is extremely well organized, and the setting is beautiful. Since no puppy under six months of age may be exhibited in the AKC Point Show, matches are the best way to give your future champion a taste of glory. The puppies and their handlers have all levels of training, and virtually none some pretty sophisticated schooling. One of the brightest stars at this fun match is the German Shepherd puppy, partly because he's the youngest. While all other puppies must be at least three months, in the three to six month class, the German Shepherd can be just two months and compete in the two to four month class. This is a tribute to his excellent temperament and adaptability. It is a family involvement for children of all ages. Many drive more than 100 miles to show off their best friends. They bring campers, tents, and all manner of outdoor living equipment, even leads for the little ones. Though not as pressurized as the formal AKC event, expectations run high, and there's no better feeling than winning. Here, you and your dog do learn how to be a better show team, and experience is what it's all about. A delightful aspect of these matches is the involvement of children, many as young as four years of age. Tiny, loving handlers, many of whom will be on the lead of tomorrow's best in shows. Judges at match shows are generally professional handlers and breeders who donate their time. AKC judges are also present to service as the sponsors of the fun match know the right people. How many of us have gone to a dog show strictly as a spectator and suddenly see a breed that catches our eye? Often the effortless flowing gait of the German Shepherd is so impressive, many feel that they just must own one. But wanting to become involved and knowing how to get started can be two entirely different things. Though this is only a mat show, many of us will begin our show career in a setting just like this. There are two challenges ahead for the novice owner. First, to identify a breeder whom you trust. Next is to learn how to raise your puppy so he grows into a happy, well-adjusted dog that shows enthusiastically. Unless you are very lucky, it is not a good idea to fall in love with the first puppy you see. A prospective owner should attend several national and regional specialties. Thus, you develop your own concept of quality. However, in selecting a show puppy, you should rely heavily on the recommendation of the breeder. If the breeder indicates he is expecting an outstanding show litter, you would be wise to wait. You may feel nothing will be cuter than a puppy under your Christmas tree. But you should realize this new addition to your family will be with you a long time. And try to see the siren dam of the litter you are considering. In 1987, a German Shepherd dog bred by Cappy Pottle and Gloria Birch of Covey Tucker Hills made canine history. The German Shepherd! The German Shepherd is won! The house is coming down! The breeders are here! The breeders of this fine dog are here. Bob, your speech last night about New York being number one in Giants, the, the uh, football team, the baseball team, and now Manhattan, the dog, wins first number one. At Manhattan <laughs> is on the map as Manhattan. champion Cobra Ducker Hills Manhattan <laughs> is the winner. Oh, oh, oh. New York, New York. Oh, and look at the dog. He list. knows he's done it. See? A German Shepherd had never won before at Westminster. This is history. <laughs> Until now. That's Hatter. The Hatter, Manhattan. Kobe Tucker Hills, Manhattan. Handled by Jim Moses, owned by Shirley Bronstein of North Woodmere, Long Island, and Jane Firestone of Southern Pines, North Carolina. A repeat best of group winner. For the third year in a row last year, paced the herding division with 73 blue rosettes. Second among winners in American dog show history. As we said, the 1985 winner, the Scottish Terrier champion, Brayburn's Close Encounter, was retired after a 200th top award, the most in American dog show history, although back once again, Close Encounter is active, has won again. But this one right here with 198 wins altogether, Best in Shows has now added 199 to that total. And this dog, Manhattan, could very well end up being the top winner of all time. 
and you've seen it right here a very exciting moment look at that crowd of photographers around him and the dog just standing absolutely perfect Bob I want to say that Gloria Birch and Kathy Pottle who bred this dog and uh, some of the other dogs that competed against him in the breed but especially this dog they're in the audience tonight they normally do not come to Westminster they live in California uh, they told me about two weeks ago that they were coming to uh, the show because this would be Manhattan's last show, last Westminster, they thought. They didn't know, but they thought they'd come to the show. I bet they're a little bit tickled. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the German Shepherd, we've spoken about the magnificent dog, but here's a dog that does many things for many humans, does it not? It really does. It's one of the most useful animals that man has ever had. I went to uh, the uh, Association of, of, of Obedience Clubs uh, dinner a party or a gathering over in the ho hotel this afternoon, and one of the top trainers of dogs in the world told me that the German Shepherd is the best tracker. Jimmy Moses, tell us about it, buddy. This is a thrill of a lifetime. Is it? It sure is. Oh, you've had a lot of these. Yeah, but I was afraid we'd have to retire him without winning the garden. So. Did you breed this dog? No. Nope. These Introduce two young ladies the right here. This is Cappy Powell and Hello. Gloria Birch. Hi. Hi, Hi Gloria. Cappy. We're, we're so it's, proud of him. Tell me now. We, we've been talking about the trainability of a German Shepherd, and I've talked to the obedience people today about it, and they tell me they're the greatest dogs in the world for, for tracking and for anything else you want to do with them. Manhattan's achievements were 201 best in shows, 335 first in groups, and 41 in group placements. Hatter is the only dog who has twice been a Quaker Oats winner and Dog of the Year. He is the second top winning dog among all breeds in the history of the American Kennel Club. Gait is the essence of the German Shepherd, and here we see the essence of excellence. The balanced, smooth, flowing gait of the German Shepherd dog is maintained with great strength and firmness of back. The powerful drive of the hindquarters is transmitted to the forequarter through the loin, back, and withers. At full trot, the back must remain firm without sway, roll, whip, or roach. To compensate for the forward motion imparted by the hindquarters, the shoulder should open to its full extent. The foreleg should reach out close to the ground in a long stride in harmony with that of the hindquarters. The suspended flying trot is the mark of distinction that separates our breed from others.